Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at the most important tools within any digital art program. If you like what I do then check out the links in the description and also the playlist on this channel where there'll be lots of other 2D art content on its way. You can also check out my website which will list the courses in order. So to start off with it's really important that you have a graphics tablet when you're doing digital art. You can see my buyer's guide on my channel for more information on that. It is extremely difficult to use a mouse for digital drawing. A graphics tablet will give you much more control and you've got the option of pen pressure as well. Graphics tablets take about an hour to get used to and then a few more hours after that to become competent. If you really feel you can't get on with a graphics tablet then I would suggest going down the vector art route rather than the drawing route for your concept art pieces. Although I would encourage you to keep at it, keep practicing, keep trying with the drawing because it's really great that feeling you get when you can quickly sketch out concepts for your games or other things. Now graphics tablets can be a bit glitchy so make sure that yours is working. So use a basic brush in your drawing software and make sure the pen pressure is enabled and is working. I'll talk about brushes for a moment and in most programs it's automatic that if you've got a graphics tablet the pen pressure will be available. If it doesn't work check your drivers are up to date and that your graphics card is up to date and that Windows is up to date. It does make a big difference. Now I'm not going to go through every tool especially not in this video I'll talk about particular tools that might help you in later videos and I'll talk about the shortcuts for getting to those tools so you might be using something like Photoshop, Procreate if you've got an iPad, Clip Studio or Critter. All are very similar the keyboard shortcuts and the menus will obviously be different but the tools I'm using should be available in any drawing software. I'll be mainly using Critter for my software of choice mainly because it's free so anybody can access it it's a great piece of software, it's got a good selection of brushes and all the tools you need for digital drawing and painting if you want to move on to that in the future. Look out for other videos coming soon on my channel where I'll be doing a complete introduction to Critter. I'm now going to go through the main things you need from a drawing program for a quick and effective workflow. If you haven't got any installed then download Critter now and go through the installation process. So here we are in Critter and I'm going to use this program to show you the fundamental tools and options you need for basic digital drawing. So any program that you're using will ask you what sort of canvas size you want. So that's the page that you're drawing onto, the white space as it were. In Critter it gives you this start menu and you can click on new file, obviously open file if you want to. But new file will take us to this dialog box here which gives us lots of templates we can use. Now it really doesn't matter a great deal what we choose when we're learning to draw. The main thing is that you have a fairly high resolution. So I've clicked on design templates, I've gone for the design cinema, which is a nice high resolution and fairly high DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch. If you're wanting to print out some of your work then you'll want to do it in 300 DPI so it's got a nice lot of detail. But when you're sketching things out and practicing it doesn't matter too much about this. If you choose a really huge document you may have a sluggish response rate when you're drawing depending on the power of your computer. So for the most part something like this the design templates and using the design cinema template is a nice easy one. File sizes won't be too big but you'll still be able to zoom in and add lots of detail. So if I tick use this template we can now see our page right in the middle here. To zoom in and out you can use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. If you've got a graphics tablet with a wheel you can use the wheel to move in and out and to move around the canvas, let's say I'm zoomed in a bit, I can hold down spacebar and I get this hand tool and I can move around my canvas. And those are the two most important things, zooming in and out and moving about. So plus and minus for zooming in and out and the spacebar for moving around your canvas. If you're in Photoshop then it's control plus and minus to zoom in and out of your canvas and moving around your canvas is the spacebar once again. Okay so let's have a look at the toolbar down the left hand side. This will be situated down the left hand side in Photoshop as well. And for the most part the tools are very similar from program to program. The main one we want to focus on is the brush tool which is just here. The shortcut key is B which you can see with that pop out and once that's ticked I can then start drawing. Now once I tick on a tool over here the top bar changes and I've got some tool options. So there's my brush that I'm using there, I've got the opacity of my brush and the size of the brush. Those will be the most important things. It's good to get used to the keyboard shortcuts for changing the size of the brush which are the square bracket keys and I can bring them up and down and you can see the size changing at the top there as well. The square bracket keys change the size for Photoshop as well. Now my brush up here I can go into the brush settings and change things. I'm not going to talk about that and it's not important for us at the moment. You've also got the brushes down here as well and there's a really nice wide selection within Critter. 
Here's a really helpful link on DeviantArt about what all the brushes can do and what they can be used for, and I'll share that with you. I'll be talking about the brushes as I use them, but if you want to find out more, then follow the links in the description. Now, the first thing you'll notice about most brushes is that when you draw, you do have that pen pressure option. So when you push hard, it either delivers more ink or changes the size. And that depends on the type of brush. This is a really nice inking brush, as it were. A good brush for starting out is this one here, because when we draw with it, it not only changes the size, but also the amount of ink that's coming out. So that's the main brush that I'll be using just there. And it's called Basic-6 Details. Now you do have eraser or rubber options here, but every brush has an eraser option. So if I press E now, it will take me to the eraser and this icon up here will be highlighted and I can start erasing things like this. So E being the shortcut, just tap E to turn it off and turn it on. And I commonly just keep my hand over that. If you've got buttons on your graphics tablet, you might want to program one of those to the E key. So I'll turn the eraser off and go back to the brush for now. And you can see this is a black color coming out. I can come up to the top here where I've got my color wheel and change the color. You have your value down the side here on the left. So we can change this to gray by bringing our slider down to here. And then we've got a gray color or white. If I want to paint some white over this black here, I can pull it down there. So there's the value down there or the brightness and darkness. And then the color across to this corner here. And we call that saturation, how saturated the color is. And that's the slider going across this way. Now it's worth knowing you can select a color from your canvas. If I hold down control, it brings up the color picker. The tool for that is over here, but it's much easier to hold down control, select a color, and then draw that color. Hold down control, select a color, and then draw that color. And you can use that for color blending, which we'll talk about later on. Last thing to note about brushes, is that the color of the brush, you can see these are purple ones and these are blue ones, that makes a difference to what it does. Some of these are sort of smudge brushes and some are texture brushes and so on. So you can have a play with those as you wish. Now I'm going to delete our work in the middle here by increasing the size and using the eraser. And now I'm going to talk about some other important tools. So the brush tool there being the most important one and obviously the eraser within that, the other important tools that you'll probably find useful are the selection tools and move tools. So if I draw something, and you might want to join in here as well, so I'm drawing a little face there, and I want to move this to a different part of the canvas, I can select this tool here. I can then click and drag that and move it into position. So that's the move tool. It's very similar to the tool next to it, and I tend to use this more often, which is the transform tool. The good thing about this tool is that I can resize my objects nice and easily by clicking on one of the squares. If you don't want to change the shape when you drag a corner like this, just hold down shift and it will lock it into its same aspect ratio. So generally I use this tool to move around because you can click in the middle there and move around as well, but you can also transform with this tool, which makes it a bit more useful. So that's generally what I use for the move tool. Now this can be slightly confusing because Photoshop uses an icon which looks like this. So don't be tempted to press on this to move your objects. That's slightly different and that's for the vectors within Critter. So that's the move tool. The last tool is the selection tool. So if I click on one of the selection tools like this one here, that's the one I use the most. It's the outline selection tool. And I can actually draw an outline like that to select certain objects. I can then click on my transform and edit tool and transform or move whatever I have selected. So those will be your main tools. The brush tool there, the transform tool there, and the selection tool. And I prefer to use the drawing selection tool just there. Okay, so that's a brief roundup of the most important tools as I see it. In later videos, I'll be using these tools and showing you practical applications of them. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.